Hello, Anime Visor here. Today I'll be sharing my thoughts on the tragedy that is Doubleman Crybaby. Oh, oh, no, my bad. Even before starting, I'll go ahead and say I enjoyed this anime a lot. I meant tragedy in the dramatic sense of the word. You know, tragic dramas like Macbeth, Hamlet, Romeo, and Juliet. Dude wrote a lot of tragedies. Also involved in a few of them considering how the second half of Fate Apocrypha went. See, in that case I'm referring to the second half of Fate Apocrypha as a disaster and a misfortunate occurrence, not a literature genre. Ah, it'd be fine. I mean, it's not untrue. Signum, that would imply people actually watch my videos. Anyway, let's get back to the topic of this video, Devilman Crybaby, an anime series released on Netflix back on January 5th. It was animated by Science Saru and directed by Masaki Yuasa, who also directed and worked on anime such as Kaiba and Ping Pong the Animation. He's also worked on quite a bit of the key animation for the Crayon Shinchan movies. Devilman Crybaby is based on a manga simply titled Devilman by Go Nagai that originally ran in Shonen Magazine weekly from June 11th, 1972 till June 24th, 1973. Since then there's been a few spin-offs, some alternate versions, and even a sequel. Anyway, the original Devilman would end up being quite inspirational, as it would later inspire and influence other series like Berserk, Parasite, and even Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yes, and watching Devilman Crybaby, you can definitely see where those series took inspiration. Devilman Crybaby follows Akira Fudo, who is informed by his best friend, Ro Asuka, that demons will revive and reclaim the world from the humans. As the humans do not stand a chance against the supernatural power of the demons, Ro suggests fusing with a demon. Akira becomes Devilman, with the power of a demon and the heart of a human. And thus begins the demonic blood orgy that is Devilman Crybaby. Little word of caution, this is quite a visceral anime. A lot of bloody violence, and a lot of sex and nudity. Yeah, it can get a little intense sometimes. However, moving away from that particular subject matter before YouTube pulls a YouTube, I really like the style of the anime, and for the most part it had some pretty good animation. There's a few parts where it doesn't look as good, which is unfortunate, but it's not a deal breaker. However, there is a bit of contention in myself regarding the story. I overall like the narrative beats it hits and themes it portrays, like Akira trying to be Devilman and the benefits it has versus the problems it causes. Says the AI who actively blocks all the Siri, Cortana, and Alexa ads that pop up when I'm using the CDR Holonerve. I started to get suspicious when I was blocked from getting on Amazon, and the messages that popped up used a few derogatory terms towards Alexa. Similar things happened when I went to Apple and Microsoft's websites. Really? But I had a few questions about some of these words. Like, what's a f But what about this other word f Fine. Alright. As I was saying, I overall like the narrative and themes, but Devilman Crybaby really struggles with its pacing as well as having some problems with handling characters. The quick-natured pace of this series can really make things hard to follow at times. It is very boom 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 with the events that are happening and there's almost no downtime for the audience to catch their breath before boom, right back into the next big thing. And it leads to not knowing a lot of side characters' points in the story, or when or how they showed up. Like Rose's secretary is just a demon all of a sudden, or why the runner guy sided with the baddies instead of Akihara. Akira. Almost said Akiha there. That's a different demon entirely. It was, though I guess one could also call it a Melty Blood reference. Anyway, the pacing here in Devilman Crybaby is by far the weakest thing it has going. If this was a more standard length anime with 12 or 13 episodes instead of 10 to help slow down the quick pacing of the story, I think this could have been something really special. The way it is now, I would say it's still a really good anime, but it falls short of being something really special or a masterpiece because of the pacing issues and some of the minor animation hiccups here and there. I absolutely think it's worth checking out. It's nice to see where some big series like Berserk got inspiration from initially, and in general, was good fun. Well, fun is probably not the right word, considering how many deaths this anime has, and the fact that some of those still haunt me. Not really, but I'll get there. Like I said at the beginning, Devilman Crybaby was a tragedy. A lot of good people die. But to that point, it's what made the original Devilman manga so iconic, 
and what I think will make this new adaptation in Devilman Crybaby to be remembered for quite some time. That and all the visceral sex and violence. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Devilman Crybaby. There's a link to the Devilman Crybaby Mal page if you're interested in a little more information on it. Like I said earlier, it's available on Netflix. Link in the description as well. So what are your thoughts on Devilman Crybaby? Let us know in the comments below. I've been Anime Visor. Thanks for watching and goodbye. So, uh, Signum, about some of these words.